what's the hardest thing you're learning about in school right now? You know, when I was in elementary school, the hardest thing for me, other than being quiet maybe, was to learn math, especially multiplication. You know, the times table. I really struggled with that when I was in second grade. But my mom was a good teacher and she made flashcards for me and we sat for many, many hours rehearsing and remembering those flashcards what two times two was, and two times three, and four times four. It was all a mystery to me. And without my mom, and without my teacher at school, I wouldn't have learned those things. And they were important, because I still use those today. Maybe you don't, so you don't um, struggle at school. Maybe you struggle with other things, like learning how to play baseball, or learning how to be a good dancer, or maybe even being good at Taekwondo. Did you just learn how to do that all by yourself? Or did you have to have somebody teach you? A coach, like there's coaches in Little League. I know that, my boys had a coach. There are coaches and teachers in Taekwondo and a lot of you take dance lessons and you have recitals coming up. Would you know how to dance as good as you do right now? if it hadn't been for a teacher. We all need teachers and coaches. Sometimes we call them mentors. You know, there was a good teacher in the Bible, one we don't talk about real often, and his name was Philip. And Philip was called to go meet a man from Ethiopia. He was to meet him on the road to Gaza. That's a city. But the man from Ethiopia, well, he had traveled a long, long way. Ethiopia is on the continent of Africa. Can you see it there? It's way down here. And Philip was coming from up in here. He was really coming from Samaria. He had to travel mm, several days to get there. Something like maybe three days by walking. The Ethiopian man had gone up to Jerusalem so he could worship. Then he was on his way back home. That was almost 1,600 miles. How long would it take you to walk 1,600 miles? Well, I didn't know that answer. But I Googled it. Do you know what it told me? It said 780 hours. That's a long time. If you divide that by 24 hours, because that's how many hours there are in a day, it would take more than a month to walk or ride your chariot from here to there. And then you would have to do it again to get back home. And that's what the man from Ethiopia did. He went that far. And do you know why? Because he wanted to worship God. That's how badly he wanted to know all about God. But he was confused. God knew he was confused. Do you know what he did? That's when he talked to Philip. He sent an angel, and the angel told Philip to go meet the man on the Gaza Road. They called it the Desert Road. And so he did, and he found him. That's Africa. And so Ethiopia would be right, right in here. Okay? Anyway, Philip met the man, and he explained to him the scriptures. He said, do you know what you're reading? And the man said, how can I know if nobody teaches me? It's like baseball. How can you know how to do it if nobody teaches you? Or how do you know how to do math if nobody teaches you? There had to be a teacher. And so Philip became his teacher. And he taught him everything the scripture said about Jesus Christ. And do you know what happened? We see it in this picture. The man from Ethiopia wanted to be baptized. He wanted to be a member of God's family. And so Philip baptized him. And you know what happened next? Philip went on to another town to preach about Jesus. And the man from Ethiopia went back to Ethiopia and told everybody in that land about Jesus. 
he became a disciple. And he made God's word and Jesus' story spread far, far, far from the little town of Jerusalem. Isn't that an amazing story? Do you know what we learn from this story? That we can be teachers too. That we can share God's word with those around us. We don't have to travel for more than a month or go 1,500 miles. We just share it with our friends. So why don't you do that? Why don't you share Jesus with somebody you know? Maybe you could share it with your brother or sister, or maybe a cousin, or maybe tell your grandma or grandpa. That's a good place to start, because they'll want to hear the story of Jesus from you, because they know that it'll come from your heart. That's a great lesson from Philip today about him and the man from Ethiopia. I hope you remember it. Let's pray. Father, we are so thankful for Philip and for all of the disciples who went and shared Jesus' word with the people around them, not just close at home, but far, far away. Help us to be like them. Help us to be brave, to be bold, and to be willing to share your word with the people around us. And what's that word? That Jesus loves us, that he is big and strong and mighty, and he is with us wherever we go. Father, thank you for our kids. Take care of them and keep them safe. We ask this in Jesus' name, amen. Our next song is Open My Eyes That I May See. <laughs> 